Okay, let's talk about how to read drum notation. So this is going to happen in two parts. Part one is going to be the basics of beat, measures, time signatures, and note values. And then part two, we're going to take that knowledge and actually take a look at examples of drum notation, break them down, and by the end of this, you'll understand drum notation, you'll understand how to read it. Uh, it's not as scary as you might think, and it's very important, especially if you are taking the instrument seriously and you want to continue to progress. So really recommend uh, checking this out. So let's go ahead and dive in. We have to start with beat. Okay, so beat is a steady pulse. Okay, so you can snap. Okay, you could pound on your chest. I'm not gonna because I got this mic here. Uh, but it's just that steady pulse. Okay, think of your heartbeat. Okay, it's nice and steady. So pick your favorite song. I want you to pick your favorite song right now. I've got something pulled up here. And I want you to play the song and I want you to snap your fingers or tap your chest, whatever, along with that steady pulse that you find in the music. Okay, here we go. Right? So you can do that with any song. You know, sometimes uh, certain examples you might choose, certain songs have tempo changes and things like that. But if you're picking a pop song, if you're picking a rock song, it's gonna have a steady pulse, okay? That's what we wanna find, we wanna find that beat. Okay, so in written music, beats are divided into measures, also called bars. Measures are separated by bar lines, okay? Let's go ahead and take a closer look at that. Okay, so in front of us we have four measures, okay? One, two, three, four, and each measure is divided by a bar line. That's this guy right here, okay? So let's go ahead and count the notes per measure and don't pause at the bar lines, okay? So it's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, okay, you get the idea. One, two, three, four across the board. All right, so music can be written with any number of beats per measure. It's very common to have four beats per measure. Uh, three beats is also common too. That looks like this. That would be one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, okay? Uh, great, so but how do you know how many beats each measure should have? Right, and that's what brings us to time signature, which is also called meter, okay? So you've probably seen this before in written music. If you've ever looked at written music, there's a 4-4 four, four here, that's a time signature. Uh, also, just so you know, this right here is called a neutral clef. You might have seen a treble clef, or a, it looks kind of like a G or an and sign, and a, a bass clef. This is a neutral clef, which is used for percussion a lot of times. Um, anyway, this is a time signature, Okay, and if we come on down here, this is also a time signature. This is 3-4. Okay, so let's go ahead and break down the time signature. So the top number is how many beats to a measure. And the bottom number is which kind of note is equal to one beat. All right, so if we have a 3-4 time signature, that means that we have three beats to a measure. You can see here we have one, two, three, and that bottom number, that is going to be a quarter note. It means, the four means that a quarter note gets a beat, okay? You're going to understand that more and more as you go along, but just know that that bottom number is telling you what kind of note is going to be equal to one beat. If we look at the top again, we had three beats in a measure. Well, how do we know that it's not three eighth notes or three whole notes or, or three half notes, like, it's gonna get confusing. How do I know which, which one to put in? Well, this measure right here gets three beats, and those beats, or the quarter note, is what is equal to one beat. Okay, that might be kind of confusing right now. Uh, just keep plugging through this, and it'll make all kinds of sense. It's not that, that hard to grasp. Just get a little grasp, but give it a little time, okay? So, the top number on this one, let's give it one more example is six and the bottom number is eight. Okay, so that means that there are six beats in the measure. We can see one, two, three, four, five, six. And the eight means that the eighth note is equal 
to one beat. Okay, so we have six eighth notes. You're not going to see you're not going to see six quarter notes. Okay, because a quarter note is not equal to one beat in this context. It's an eighth note that's equal to a beat. All right, so that's another example there for you. Okay, so let's talk about notes and note values. All right, so we've talked a little bit about the quarter note and the eighth note. Let's go over each one of the notes. So starting with notes up here, we have the whole note that looks like this. We've got the half note, looks like this. Quarter note, filled in. Eighth note, little flag here. Sixteenth note, two flags. The rests that correspond to these notes, you've got a whole rest, which is like an upside down top hat. You have a half rest, which is a, a top hat. You have a quarter rest, which is this kind of funky squiggly. You got an eighth rest, okay, this bar with kind of a little nub here, and then a sixteenth rest, bar with two nubs. Okay, so this is just to familiarize yourself with what the notes look like and what their names are. Let's talk about the values of the notes. Now, you'll notice that I have note values in 4-4 up here. So the time signature that we're working with is 4-4. And that's the time signature that we're going to be working with from now to the, the rest of, through the rest of this course. May, maybe in the drum notation part two, we can go over a couple other time signatures. But for right now, just think that everything we do is going to be in 4-4. Four, four. So we're looking at four beats in a measure, and the quarter note is what equals one beat. Okay. Now, rests have the same value as everything I've laid out here. So I'm not going to do one of these charts with rests. It's the same thing for rests. All right. So... What this means is that the whole note, one whole note, is equal to two half notes, which is equal to four quarter notes, which is equal to eight eighth notes, which is equal to 16 sixteenth notes. Okay? So they all equal each other. This might make a little bit more sense if we break it down and play it on a piano with a note that has some sustain to it. I'm going to play it on middle C, and we can count to a metronome and listen to how these notes are counted and also the, the values of the note, okay? So let's go down here to the whole note, just to reiterate. We've got a whole note going on in 4-4 time and we're gonna put our metronome on 60 BPM. Just so if you're curious, I use a metronome app for iPhone called Tempo. It might be for Android as well. I really like this app. Okay, so you can see on the app that I've got in the bottom right-hand corner, you can see that I have it set to uh, quarter notes, okay? If I click this, there are different options. You can set it to uh, eighth notes here. You can come over here and set it to 16th notes. There's like triplets and stuff. Let's not worry about that right now. Let's just set it to eighth, no or sorry, to quarter notes. And you can see that the quarter note equals 60. Okay, so there's 60 beats per minute. Okay, so I'm going to start the metronome. At 60 BPM, I'm going to count along with it and I'll play you a whole note. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One more time. One, two, three, four. Okay? Great. So that is a whole note. Okay? Let's move on to the half note. All right? So here we go. One, two, three three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, very good. Let's move on to the quarter note. Here we go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, very good. Now let's move to the eighth note, and I'm actually gonna change my metronome to eighths, okay? We're on eighth note. So you'll hear the counting's gonna be different. Instead of going one, two, three, four, we're gonna go one and two and three and four and to count each one of those eighths. Here we go. One and two and three and four and. One and two and three and four and. One and two and three and four and. Okay, you see, I counted each one of those and I was playing middle C, that note, on each one of those. Let's move to 16th. Okay, oh, I do want to talk about this. So, the way that I had it written before, uh, there's one eighth note on each one of the, the numbers and the ands. 
the way that you'll commonly see it written is actually like this, okay? Where you, what you're gonna have is what's called a beamed eighth note. You've got two beamed eighth notes here. This is the beam and it ties them together, okay? That's really how you'll see it written. You won't really see it broken down and written this way, uh, but I just wanted to break it down this way so that you could see each one of them. Okay, so two beamed eighth notes, great. Now let's move on to 16th notes. I'm going to change my metronome to 16ths. And the way we count these is 1 E and a, 2 E and a, 3 E and a, 4 E and a. Once again, what you're seeing here is individual 16th notes. I wanted to break them down like this, but you won't see them written like this. If they're in succession, you'll see them written like this. They're beamed. Okay, so what you have here are four beamed 16th notes. One, two, three, four. There's groups of these, and these are the beams again, okay? So let's go ahead and put the metronome on. We're still at 60 BPM. This is 16th notes. So one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. Okay, very good. So now we have counted the notes out. We've played it on a piano so that you can hear the values. What we can do is actually go back and I will show you really quick on a drum pad what this would sound like. Okay, so we're going back to uh, quarter notes and it would be like this on a drum pad. Again, with a drum pad, there's no sustain on the note. You hit it, even if it's a whole note, you're gonna hear the note and then it's gone. So that's why I wanted to play it on the piano so you could hear. Let's just go ahead and do this exercise really quickly with the drum pad and the drum stick, okay? So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, let's go to half note. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, let's go to quarter note. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Car one, I'll count quieter. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay. Let's go to eighth notes. Again, I'm gonna change the metronome to eighths. Here we go. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Okay, let's go to sixteenths. There's the beamed eighth notes and then let's go to sixteenths. There's no reason I didn't pause the screen on the beamed eighth notes, I just forgot to. Okay. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. Now, you don't have to put your metronome on these subdivisions, meaning you don't have to change your metronome from quarter note to eighth note to sixteenth note to play eighth notes and sixteenth notes. What I mean is you can keep your metronome on quarter notes and you can play eighth notes and sixteenth notes. You can do it like this. These are quarter notes, right? Three, four. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. Okay, that was me with the metronome on quarters. I was counting sixteenths and I was playing sixteenths. What if we counted quarters and played sixteenths? So it would be one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, that's actually a, a good exercise. If you want to nail down the uh, beat and the rhythm of it, you use the finer subdivision. So if you're really trying to nail down staying on tempo with something, Use, use 16th notes and play right to 16th. If you want to nail down your own internal clock, your own time, and be able to feel uh, the rhythm and stay on, t uh, on, on beat by yourself, you actually use uh, g larger subdivisions and uh, that makes it so that you have to be the timekeeper, right? So we can get into that later, but that's, 
I just want you to know that you don't have to set your metronome on anything to, to do these exercises. Okay, so the next thing is counting exercises. There are three exercises, one, two, and three. Let's go ahead and do them together. We're gonna do them on the drum pad. I've got the metronome set at 60 BPM. We've got quarter notes set. What we're gonna do is on the drum pad, I'm gonna play these notes. Now, just so you know, this note here for drum notation is a kick drum. I'm playing it on my drum pad as if it were a snare, okay? Just look past that right now. I just wanted to show you guys. These notes right here are really more right now for counting the value. Okay, so let's go 60, one, two, three, four. And since we actually have eighth notes stipulated here, one and two and three and four and, let's go ahead and um, count eighth notes, okay? One and, whoops, <laughs> one and two and three and four and 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 one. Okay? You can see I played on one, three, and the and of four. All right, let's move to the next one. Again, 60, we're gonna count eighth notes. One and two and three and four and 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 one. Okay, so for exercise three, we've actually shifted the metronome to 40. We've moved it to 16th notes. And let me actually go ahead and play through this one first and then I'll explain some things about it, okay? One E and uh, two E and uh, three E and uh, four E and uh, one E and uh, two E and uh, three E and uh, four E and uh, one E and uh, two E and three E and uh, four E and uh, one E and uh, two E and three E and uh, four E and uh, okay. So what you need to know about this one is, first of all, we switched to 16th notes, one E and uh, two E and, uh, uh, I shouldn't say we switched to 16th notes, we've switched to dividing things by 16th notes, okay? That's the subdivision we're using. And you can see a 16th note in this case is marked by, remember those two flags? That's this, that's a 16th note. If it doesn't have that, it's an eighth note. They're just all barred, kind of like tied together all right, it's that beam thing again. And that's just for ease of reading it instead of putting each individual note. But you've got a 16th note here, and then you've got an eighth note, and then you've got a 16th note here, okay? Uh, and, and then we've got an eighth rest, and then we go, what is this? This is an eighth note, okay? Then you've got one, two, three, four, 16th notes. Then what's this here? You've got a dot, you've got a dotted eighth note. What a dot is, it means you take the value of the note, which is an eighth note, which normally would last four E, but a dot, you actually take half of the value of the note that has the dot and tack it on to the note. So the value of this note is an eighth note, that would be four E, what's half that value? It's a 16th note, so you tack a 16th note on, which is equal to one of these things, so you have four E and, and then you end with a 16th note on a. Uh. Okay, so that's what a dot does. It just adds half the value of the note that the dot belongs to. Okay, that's just to introduce you to dots. We can talk more about that in the next part. And that is all I have for you here. So that's part one. Go back and review anything that wasn't clear to you. And uh, when you've got it down, go ahead and move on to part two.